Hi guys and welcome back to Ringwood Volkswagen. My name's Ian and this is your tutorial on your brand new Volkswagen Tiguan Comfort Line. This particular model that we're looking at is actually fully optioned, so depending on which car, um, which factory options you did purchase with your particular vehicle, some of these things may vary. Let's get straight into it. The car comes with this key, which has three buttons on it, lock, unlock, and also a tailgate release. You also get a jackknife key in the event if the key goes flat and you can't get into the car on the door handle. This cap right here actually comes off. You can insert the key and still get in. At the moment, the car's locked. To use the key of the century, I have the key on my person now. Just simply walk up to the door handle, reach in, like so. You'll notice that you've unlocked it because the actual mirror will fold out. And then you just pull the door. If you wanted to lock the car, using the button located just on the door handle there, if you just push it, again, as long as the key's on your person, you'll lock the vehicle and the mirrors will fold back. To release the tailgate, simply walk up to the back of the car. Under the badge, there's a button just under here. If you push it, the car will do the rest. If you want to close the boot, the button for that is located just up here. Just simply push it and that'll fold back down for you. The car also does have a kick open function. So if your hands are full and you need to open the tailgate, if you just kick uh, just to the right side where the badge is, just one foot uh, space to the right underneath, like so. It will also open up. You can also do the same um, movement to also close it. Now, in your boot, you'll notice that uh, we don't have anything in there at the moment. If you wanted to access your spare tyre, just simply lift up the divider. It'll actually hold onto the triangles that you see on either side and then you'll be able to access it. This particular car has the sound and vision package so that you'll notice uh, that uh, part of the sound system actually sits inside the spare. That can just unscrew via here and then you'll also notice that all your tools to do an appropriate change are located right next to it. Uh, your fuel cap is located on the back right side of the car. Now it is a push release so you'll notice at the moment if I try to push it open it won't actually do anything. If I have the car unlocked which I have just done now if you come up to the back corner and just push on it you'll be able to release it. There is no button inside of the cabin for you to release it. It is a push release only. In regards to the interior and the second row uh, you do have uh, tables that fold out so if you have a look just under here, there's actually a button that sits in the middle. So if you just push it in, you can actually fold it up. And there's also cup holders that come out as well. To fold it back in, just push the button again and then go back down. As we enter the interior, we just have a look at the door here. We have a few controls on there. So you've got uh, your buttons for your central locking. You've got your window buttons here. There's also a window lockout button here and this here controls your side mirror so if we're just coming in a little bit closer so you'll notice that there's an l and there's an r so what you can actually do is if you actually turn it to the left or the right mirror once you've done that move it around like a joystick like so so you can adjust your side mirrors there's also a logo down at the bottom right this will turn on your demisting function for the side mirrors and this one here will actually just manually uh, fold the mirrors in for you too the car can be set up so that when you actually lock the car, that the mirrors will fold in. Some people like that feature, some people don't. Your preference as the driver. You'll also notice too that there is a button to release the tailgate if you didn't want to use the key. Now for your seat um, adjustment, you do have controls located on the side of the seat and there's also the buttons for the memory safe function as well. So this one here controls your lumbar support for your lower back. This one here will actually move the seat portion at the bottom so you can slide it forward, you can slide it back. You can also raise it and lower. This one here is for your actual back adjustment as well. So depending on where you would like that to be, you can adjust that as well. You can actually pre-program um, your seat positions with uh, by hitting set once you've adjusted it. 
and then an appropriate number to override just readjust your seat and then push set one again if somebody else has been driving your car and they've moved the seat what you can actually do is uh, with your profile saved you just jump back into the car and push the appropriate number that you saved to if you hold it it will take you back um, to its original position with your side mirror save as well now inside the cabin this button here will control your headlights you'll notice that at the moment it is set to automatic so when it starts to get to dusk they will turn on themselves as well if you wanted to turn that feature off or just turn the actual lights off themselves you can just turn it back to off you also have your parking lights as well and then that's your manual mode for your headlights Below the light switch, you do have a hidden storage compartment as well. To control your high beams, uh, we're on the left stick. So if your headlights are actually engaged, what you can do uh, for high beam manual mode, you can just pull it up towards you. You'll notice it in the dash that you have a little, a little icon that comes up to say that they're active. Okay. Uh, if you actually push the stick forward, this will actually activate your automatic high beams. So at night time, what will happen, if there's any cars that are in front of you, uh, the car will automatically turn on and off the high beams. It'll only work if you can see that logo with the A symbol inside. Uh, being that it is a European built car, your indicators are also on the left stick too. So indicating to the right, indicating to the left. Right stick, you do have your um, wipers so the car does come with automatic uh, rain sensing wipers to engage it just push it up to the first lock position if you push it up further than that then you'll just in uh, you'll just start off manual mode the car also comes with paddle shifters if you wanted to drive the car in sports mode and have a bit of fun so on the left that's for your downshift and on the right is your upshift or if you push and hold it in uh, it'll take it from manual mode back to just normal auto mode. The car does come with voice control. Now there's two parts to it. One, you have the Volkswagen operating system version. So if you push it here on the steering wheel, you'll notice it on the head unit in the center. Uh, it'll give you a list of commands with how you can interact um, and use it. If you're inside Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, uh, it'll actually uh, engage the virtual assistant. So for example, uh, with Apple CarPlay, it'll engage with Siri, or if you're inside Android Auto, it'll start up the OK Google Assistant. Now also on the right side of the steering wheel, we have these uh, arrow keys up and down, side to side and an OK button, and also a view button too. Now being that this particular model is fully loaded and it does have the sound and vision package we have the digital display that sits in front of us uh, depending if you have this option or not these controls will change what's displayed in either this screen or if you have uh, no sound and vision and you've just got the two instrument uh, clusters with a smaller digital screen it'll still use that function so at the moment you can see that we've got the map displayed and then we've got the uh, appropriate gear and speedometer down bottom left and bottom right so depending on what you actually push here so let's just say for example I push to the right you can actually change it off the map and change between your radio or your music settings your telephone you know vehicle st uh, status driving data this is quite a good one so you can have like say for example your range until empty um, but multiple options there so what we might do just to show you something We'll just select our digital speedo in the middle. Now you'll notice that at the moment we've now got two that are coming up on the screen. What you can do now, if you push the actual view button here, if you have a watch, that's more of a sort of minimalist style. You can change it to give you more information on the screen, or you can actually change it back to a more traditional view. Okay, um, and then where it says park and speed in, cent in the center of the two clusters, you can actually change that further again. So via the head unit, if we click on menu, vehicle, settings, if we scroll down to instrument cluster, 
click on settings here. Now this screen will come up and then you can actually change. We go to like say view one or two or three. You'll now notice that what was sitting inside the instrument clusters has now changed. So if you wanted to say, for example, have your consumption on the left, have say your range uh, until empty on the right, you can do it. Or if you wanted to just scroll through and select something else. So for example, your driver assistance, you'll now notice that the screen's changed again. And if we go back to what we were talking about at the start, by pushing up and down, say for example, in driving data, again, there's actually a lot that you can change here. Like even if you wanted to run the map, like so, you can still do it. Change the style. It's really your preference as the driver, guys, how you would like to um, have that set up. Now, if we take a look at the left side of the steering wheel, we have our controls for our adaptive cruise. You can tell because it's got the symbol here that can control the gap between you and the car that's in front. Res is for resume or restart. We have set, which can set the speed that which you're driving at. This button here is for on and off. This button here, if you have a look in the center screen when I push it in, this will actually bring up a, a quick guide for all of your safety tech. So if you wanted to quickly turn something off, this is the quickest way to do it. And if you push the button again, it'll disappear. You'll notice that because we've got the driver assistance screen on the right side there at the moment, if I push the gap setter, you'll notice that it'll change with uh, different white bars. So each bar actually represents one second of a gap that it's between you and the car that's in front. So if you wanted to be a bit safe, you'd probably want to leave it for either two seconds or three seconds. Um, if you want a bit more of a, a distance, you can obviously set that right up to five seconds too. In regards to setting the actual um, speed, once you've set it, pushing plus and minus here on the silver button, if you have a look down the bottom where there's three dashes next to the kilometers, so that's me setting it to 30 and then 40 and 50. The silver buttons will increase or decrease by 10. Okay, if you wanted to use um, resin set once it's been set, resin set will go up plus one and minus one. So essentially we have plus 10, minus 10, plus one, minus one. You'll also notice too, at the bottom of the right side and the left side, we have even more buttons again. Bottom left will do your track selection or your radio station selection. It'll just uh, scroll through those. And then you also have volume control on the, uh, on the bottom left as well. If you have a look at the head unit, they also do give you um, volume control just here as well. Now everyone, with your actual head unit, so your center screen, there's quite a few options here. You can actually use it like a tablet. So if you wanted to just push on it and just scroll, you can do it. Uh, you've also got a little trick where it's got the gesture control. So if you hold your hand up to it and then just wave in front of it, you can also slide it that way too. You'll also notice that we've got, aside from the volume control, we've got uh, three buttons here. The screen that we're looking at now is the menu uh, feature, which is the first one. You can click on the home button as well, which will give you a few different items at the same time. So a bit of the satellite navigation, telephone and also your music or your radio settings and then the power button there will just turn uh, the music on and off for you too now we won't run through every menu and every sub menu i'll just show you some of the main ones so if we push on menu here you can have a play around with your radio inside of the first feature now you'll notice that we've got some presets already shown coming up down the bottom there let's just say you wanted to have a different type of selection so let's just say for example you wanted to listen to uh, Fox so 101.9 if you wanted to pre-save it what you can do is if you select down the bottom and then choose it so that it actually comes up at the top of the screen so just here once you can see that if you just push and hold the preset once you hear the beep that's how you can resave it uh, the next item that I'll show you is the media function so with the Tiguan, there's a lot of different ways that you can play music um, into the car. So once you've clicked on it, if you click on source, these are all of the different options that, you have ha uh, that you've got. So you've got the jukebox, uh, which is an actual physical hard drive that you can copy music into. 
to copy music into it, you must plug in a device into it's probably a bit hard to see but uh, there's actually usb ports located just under the air conditioning controls so if you wanted to copy some music into the car you can uh, we still run a cd player so that's just located inside the glove box there same with your sd card slots one and two uh, the usb connectivity is where i've showed you before bt audios for your bluetooth audio which is from like say a mobile device uh, you can still plug in via an auxiliary jack which again I do apologise about the lighting being a bit terrible, but there's actually, you probably just be able to see the little bit there. That's where you can plug into. And then WLAN is actually the car's wireless connection where if you have a rear passenger that wants to be a DJ, they can actually play music from a separate device on top of your own phone. Now, we'll talk about navigation next. So if you click on it, this is what it'll look like. Now, you'll notice too that... Um, while I've been talking, there were buttons that came up down the bottom, and now they've disappeared. If you hold your hand up to the screen, they'll actually become visible again. So it just gives you more screen when you're not um, holding your hand up to it. Now, with some of the options that we have down the bottom, we've got new destination. Okay. You can just hit do not show again for the tutorial. Now, you've got a few options here. You can either just start typing away with an address, but what I normally find the easiest way to do it, if you select that flag symbol up here, and change it to enter step by step. What you can then do is enter in the town first, then the street, and then the number. And because it's all predictive, so for example, um, let's just say I wanted to type in Ringwood. So as I type it, it didn't let me finish because it's now given me some options. So now if I wanted to select Ringwood, Melbourne, I can now type the street. So we'll say Marunda Highway. So I don't need to, again, type out the whole street I can then select it and then street number and that's it away we go you can also do this if you wanted to store it as one of your destinations or if you want to go right ahead just click on start yeah if you wanted to pre-save your home address to the car uh, how you can do it if you click on my destinations click on home address and then down here select address and then just type it in like I showed you before. Uh, you'll also notice that if you click on view here, there are a few options there that you can choose from. Have a play around with that. Uh, if you click on settings here too, you've got further options again. So you can do things where uh, you can set up your fuel options so that if you wanted to only use BP as your service station, you can actually preset that as well. If you wanted to, um, say for example, choose your route options, you can also do that with tolls and motorways and such. You can even change with the um, the announcements when it does or doesn't talk to you. If you're on a phone call, you're going to minimise, um, you know, the car interrupting you while you're on the phone and things. So have a play around with it. Again, there's quite a few options there. Um, you won't break anything. Um, they, they even give you a waypoint mode where you can actually set multiple locations to actually travel to as well which is quite handy. Uh, any further questions on the navigation, don't hesitate to uh, get in contact with us. If you wanted to remove the points of interest, so the blue icons off the map, what you can actually do, if you click on settings, click on map, and here where it says show POIs, you can just untick that. Or if you did want to see them, um, select categories for POIs, you can actually choose what actually comes up on the map, but you can only have a maximum of, I believe it's eight. So if we just untick that now, you'll notice that it's a lot more clear when you look at it. The last thing I'll show you with the actual mapping system is it's very similar to a tablet. So what you can actually do, if you want to just put your finger on there and actually scroll around, you can do it. You can also uh, pinch to zoom in or do it the opposite direction to zoom out as well. If you lose sight of where you were, and you need to recenter the map, you can just push the car symbol just here. To connect your telephone, select telephone. You'll notice that this screen comes up with a connection, so please find uh, Volkswagen Bluetooth 5930. The 5930 is a unique number. It's actually the last four digits of your VIN number. And if you have a look at the next part, uh, I'll show you how to do it on your phone.
All right, so now that we've got our phone connected, you'll notice that your name will come up um, up the top here, as long as you've named your phone. So being that I have an iPhone, uh, obviously you can see that what I've got. If you've got an Android, it might be called something different. It might be called Samsung, or it might be called your Samsung device, but that's when you'll know that it's connected. You can also see up on the screen here too, that um, your battery life in your phone reception comes up at the top, which is quite handy. Now, you've also got some presets that you can choose to use as well. So, for example, um, let's just say oh, I wanted to select uh, one of my friends or family members. Uh, if you have a look here, there's a few options to choose from. So, once we've done one, uh, for example, I'll just use this one here. Uh, you'll notice that now uh, it's actually saved as my first one. Also, you'll notice if you hold your hand up to the screen, you've got more options that become available down the bottom. You can still dial a number if you wish. You've also got the um, the number here for the breakdown services. Uh, you'll find that you should have a sticker located up on the top of your windscreen, but uh, they also pre-program it uh, regardless. You've also got all your contacts down here, all your call histories here, and then there's also another settings option. So, for example, with some people, um, some people like to... Uh, have their phone book organized by say first name as opposed to surname so you can actually change it in here if you like so the next thing we're going to run through is apple carplay and android auto now just bear in mind when you click on app connect this screen will pop up if your device isn't plugged in uh, you'll notice that it does say please connect a device via usb has to be plugged in it will not work wirelessly and that's for all of them now the next one that we'll talk about is vehicle so if you select it this is the menu that has uh, a lot of your different driving data screens so if you click on selection here and say select driving data you got your fuel economy usage you'll notice that this one's uh, out quite a bit because it is a new car it hasn't actually been driven yet hence why it's so high uh, there's also a think blue trainer so the car can actually give you helpful tips and tricks on how to maintain um, excellent fuel economy and minimizing the wear and tear course of the car while you drive it. If you click on settings down here, this will give you a list of options where you can even customize the whole driving experience um, even further to your liking. And we'll run through those next. All right, so the first thing that we'll look at is the tires. So here with this particular car, uh, it does have a tire pressure uh, monitoring system. So what it actually does is uh, it actually works off the rolling diameter of your, of your tires. So if the car detects that your tires are starting to get a little bit low and that the rolling diameter of the wheel has changed, it'll actually let you know you'll get a warning uh, that pops up uh, on your dash and um, it'll let you know that you need to go pump them up. Once you've pumped up the tires to reset at the new tire pressure, just push set and then push confirm there. Now, the next one that we'll talk about, again, we won't run through all of them, um, everyone, but uh, we'll talk about the driver assistance setting. So this is where you can personalize a lot of the safety systems. So first one being the adaptive uh, cruise control. You can either preset it so that it goes back to your last gap setting, or if you wanted to untick that box and select here, each one of these options here represents one second. So very close, giving you a one second gap, two second gap, three second gap, four and a five second gap. If I wanted to select a five second gap just here, if you look back to the screen now, see how it's changed? If I wanted to change it from like say five seconds back to three seconds, it will auto adjust for you there too. If we have a take a look at the next option, uh, you've got your autonomous emer emergency braking system. So you can actually turn that on or turn that off. I would suggest that you leave it on. Underneath there you have your lane assistant too with your adaptive lane guidance. Again, I suggest that you leave that on. And then you got your side assist, which incorporates your blind spot monitoring system with the lane assistant. You can actually change the brightness. So if you wanted to actually max the brightness out in the mirrors, you can do it. And you've also got your driver alert system. So the car uh, does, uh, does monitor your steering and your pedal input. Um, and if the car detects that you're starting to get a little bit tired, and it feels like you need to take a break, it will actually give you a warning as well. All right, so the next one that we'll have a look at is also your parking and manoeuvring. So this is where you can actually change uh, the volume and the sound to what the sensors sound like. And if you scroll down to the bottom, 
You've also got your maneuver braking and your rear traffic alert. They've both been ticked in this one, so just make sure that they're active as well. The next one that we have is the uh, background lighting. So this is where you can actually change, if you select all areas, you can actually change um, how bright or how soft the ambient interior lighting is. Uh, you've also got mirrors and wipers. So in here, again, a few options there. Uh, you can have the left um, side mirror or the passenger side um, side mirror, I should say. You can actually have it lower uh, while reversing the car. So that box being, uh, has been ticked there. Here, if you wanted to tick or untick fold in when locking, um, so when you lock the car, they will fold in there. But if you untick that, that'll stop that from happening. And then you've got uh, your boxes ticked for the wipers as well for your automatic uh, wiping in the rain. And the rear one will actually engage when you're in reverse gear too. Now, next, we'll click on opening and closing. Now, there's a few different options here. So with window operation and where we've got convenience opening, if you push that to all windows, what you can do, uh, using the key fob, if you wanted to push and hold lock or unlock uh, for more than five seconds, you can essentially wind down or wind up all of the windows at once. So if you, for example, let's just say it's summertime and you wanted to air the car out before you jump into it, you can actually push and hold the unlock button for more than five seconds and drop all the windows down to let um, all the hot air uh, release. It's the same as if, let's just say you wanted to lock the car and walk away, you've left a window down. Instead of going back to the car, you can just push and hold the lock button and it will wind up the window. This car is also set to um, where it says down here, lock automatically when driving. What you can essentially do, it's like an anti-intruder device. When you drive off, if it's ticked, the car will lock itself. Now, it won't lock you in. If you pull the door handle, you'll still be able to get out of the vehicle. The easy open option is for the, the kick open and close that I demonstrated earlier. The next one that we'll have a look at is the seats. So in here, there's an option where you can click on driver seat for the access aid. What it essentially does when you turn the car off to jump out, the driver's seat will actually back off a bit just to give you more room to get in and out of the car. Instrument cluster we briefly touched on earlier. So again, if you wanted to change the active info display or the digital dash, you can click on settings just here. Uh, there's also extra options that you can tick for driving data that can come up. And if you wanted to reset the odometer as well, you can do it here. Next one, time and date. So if you ever need to change it, click on here. You can actually pair it up to the GPS. This button here is for when it's daylight savings time. So at the moment it isn't, so we'll just untick that. And you just wanna make sure that you've got the time zone set appropriately too. So if we click on here, it's already set to Eastern Australia. So just be mindful of that. You can also change the format if you wish to have it in either 12 or 24 hour time. The last one that I'll show you inside the vehicle options is the service. Now, the car will let you know, it'll actually give you a warning 1,500 kilometers before you're due uh, for the next service. If you're not doing the kilometers, so the intervals on this car are every 15,000 kilometers or 12 months, whichever comes first. If you're not doing the kilometers, uh, the time warning will come up for you as well. Now, there's also another option. If we actually swipe to the next set of screens, there's a few options here. Again, you can play around with these for the most part. The last thing that I'll show you is the air conditioning. So you can interact with the tri-zone air conditioning through this screen. If you push menu on the controls down there, this screen will also become visible. If you hold your hand up, you'll notice that there's options that come up down the bottom. To increase or to decrease, you can just push on the blue and on the red there. Yeah, for the actual uh, control unit down here, We've got our temperature for the two front seats because you've got dual zone essentially in the front. So the left side and the right side could actually be different temperatures. If you push the sync button, that'll revert it back to the driver's seat. So think of it as the driver's seat's like the master controller. You've got AC and max AC here. You've got max demisting for the front uh, windscreen. You've got rear demister here too. This one here will just do standard air to the demisting for the front one. You've also got airflow where it's going to here, got recirculation. You've got heated seats for the driver's seat and for the front passenger seat. There's three heat settings. So if there's three lights shown that's high heat, you've got medium and low. If there's no lights shown, it means that it's off. 
And the last one I'll show you too. Down here there's a button that says rest. What that does, when you uh, say for example stop the car, you turn the engine off. If you wanted to run the aircon inside the car for another 15 minutes, if you push rest, it'll reactivate it. Now around the gear stick guys, we have your push button start, which is just here. So at the moment we're in accessory mode. We're in accessory mode at the moment because I didn't have my foot on the brake when I pushed the button. If you put your foot on the brake and then engage the button, you'll start the car. To turn off the car, just push the button again. Now around the gear stick, we do have a few options on the left and the right hand side. So starting from the top left, uh, you have your button here. This will disable the idle stop start technology if you push it. This button here is for the park assist. This one here, if you push it in, will actually engage uh, your cameras up on the screen. If you put the car into reverse, your cameras will also be displayed. Now, the good thing with our system is if you actually select one of the cameras by using your finger, so you can actually look right around the car, as you can see. Once you've selected camera, uh, you can actually use these other options on the right side as well for different angles. On the right side, you've got your handbrake or park brake, if you will. These are all electronic, so if your foot's on the brake, if you actually depress it, release it. If you want to put it back on, just pull the button in an upwards direction. Uh, below that, you also have a button for auto hold. So what it does, uh, for example, if it's on, uh, it'll glow. It'll stop you from rolling anywhere until you push the accelerator. So it's like a, think of it as like a hill start assist. Now down here, because we have our all wheel drive system, uh, we've got this dial with a button that's located in the center. So I'll talk about the dial first. So if you wanted to turn it, so there's actually like a snow mode that you can actually put it into. Uh, that's for your everyday driving. So you just your normal bitumen road. It'll give you some options there too. Uh, you do have an off-road mode. Again, as you can see. And then there's also an individual one where you can actually personalize it too. When you've got it set to bitumen road, if you actually push the mode button in here, you'll notice that you can actually change between the different screens or the different options, I should say. So have a play around with those. If you're curious to know what changes, you can actually just push on the I symbol there and it'll actually show you what changes on the vehicle. Now, regarding um, sunroofs for cars that have been fitted with sunroofs, your control unit's up here. So you've actually got two buttons. You've got this one, which controls the visor. This one will actually move the glass. If you ever need to release the bonnet, on the driver's position, the lever is located just right on the door, like so. Now, under the bonnet, the only two things that you really need to be concerned of, because uh, everything else will be done through the service department. If you wanted to check the oil, the dipstick's just here in yellow. If you wanted to top up your wiper uh, fluid or your windscreen wiper fluid, uh, it's just here. Just release the cap, fill it up with some water and some car soap. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video guys, really appreciate it, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for future content and we'll see you on the next one.